how it's so nice to be able to be together on Sunday morning, whether it's uh, together in person, although that's always much nicer, or if you're home and you're watching with us and worshiping with us. And uh, I was saying to the gals in the back today, you know, we need a couple greeters, and Becky says to me, we need some of those smiles that we can put on our masks. I said, well, what do you know? I happen to have some in my office. <laughs> I said, we just have to smile a little bit bigger when we have a mask on, don't we? So uh, on that note, we do need a couple of morning greeters, people that will just make you feel good when you come in. A nice, happy good morning or a hello to get your day started. Um, so if you feel like you might want to do that on a Sunday morning, uh, let me know. And uh, honestly, it does make coming into anywhere nicer when you have someone that says, Hi, good morning, how are you? So uh, let me know if that's something you're interested in. Also, I do know that um, Mary is going to speak to us for a few minutes because we've done a lot of good work. Or I'll say Mary has done a fantastic job. Uh, working on this bed project. And Mary, will you also talk about the flood buckets yes. while you're up here? Okay, then I will let you do that and I will get out of your way and give you Tom's mic. Okay, Mary. Good morning. Um, I have some really exciting news to share. Um, I was getting ready to prepare for the weekly newsletter that I write about missions and discovered that a year ago today, we were collecting money for Sleep in Heavenly Peace a mission of building beds for kids who are sleeping on the floor. And a group of us went, a, a lot of our kids, we had 10 um, students go with us in the summer, went to um, <clears throat> Buffalo and built beds. And, the, and we had a great time. People felt really good about it. We made 20 plus beds. And um, the only problem with that was it's not a problem, but those beds were all going to the Buffalo area. And so we came back, the mission team and Nettie, and, we talked about it and thought we'd like to do something locally. And two grants later, one through Northern Chautauqua Community and one through Lakeshore Savings Community Reinvestments, um, we came up with the money that the PTEC program in Dunkirk is in the process right now of building 10 beds. Um, and they will go to 10 children, most in Northern Chautauqua County. I've worked with the Salvation Army, the Resource Center, Fredonia and Dunkirk Schools. Trinity Episcopal Church, the Free Methodist Church, all of whom came up with names of kids. We've got a lot of kids in Chautauqua County that don't have beds and that are currently sleeping on the floor. So the first three beds are to be released this Friday. The PTEC program has, is working on them as we speak. And um, so some of the beds will be delivered this coming weekend, some the following weekend, and some the rest of the weekend. The different churches and community groups and lots of my friends that I've been talking to, sponsored the bedding because I didn't want to have this all be on our church as far as the finance goes. And every child will get a pillow, a comforter, sheets, and a mattress cover to go on the mattress and bunkie boards and beds that they'll be receiving in the next three weekends. So one more time, it's been a great community effort, and I wanted to share that with you. Um, because I know for these moms, because I've been communicating with moms, they're just so excited that their children will finally have a bed. And research tells us that kids that get a good night's sleep do much better in school than kids that don't. And as a retired teacher, I truly, and as a parent, we truly value that. Um, so I thank you for all of your commitment to sleep in heavenly peace and this extension thereof. And the good news is PTAC, the kids, designed their own bed. They're not using Sleep in Heavenly Peace's plan. And they think that they're going to make this a yearly project. Um, as a matter of fact, they've involved the Springville PTEC program, and they're going, in their electronics department, going to build bed lamps to go on the beds. So it's a project that's <laughs> growing, and the children in Chautauqua County will benefit. And I am just very excited about that, and I'm guessing so are you. Um, the other piece of this is to remind you that we are doing flood buckets this month and next. We're about a quarter of the way through on our budget commitment to that. Um, you can sponsor a whole bucket at $45. Hygiene kits are around $9, or any amount would help towards the expense. We've really lowered the cost of the buckets. If you look on Umcore site, they say they cost $75 because we've been engaged in bulk purchasing and you know the different people to contact and agencies to contact. Um, we've got the cost for the buckets down to $45, and we 
are hoping to put together a hundred of each of those things in March, and we'll need your help then. So we thank you again for your support, and I think we've got lots of good news. <laughs> yes, it's a lot of great news, and um, I want to let you know that Mary wrote that one grant to make sure that we had mattresses for all those kids, so I'll give Mary a little bit of a credit there. <laughs> She's been an outstanding mission team leader. Uh, and I, I can't thank you enough for all of your hard work. So there's a lot of good things going on, even though we don't get together and we don't see as many uh, folks today maybe in person. There's a lot of good stuff <coughs> going on behind the scenes. Fredonia continues to do the good work that Fredonia has always done, whether you're in the pew or watching from home. This is that place. This is that kind of church. You are uh, the light on the hill for the Fredonia area, and uh, I am so honored to be a part of who we are. So as we move into our service, I believe that there's an opening prayer that will be up on the screen. Why don't we say that together? Jesus Christ, our Lord and our brother, you have called us to be your one church. Make us one in our faith and hope and one in worship and living daily. Lord Jesus, send your spirit to make us one as you want us to be. And Lord Jesus, we do ask you to be present with us today. We ask you, Father, to lay your hand of blessing on each person here and on each person home. And we say thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for all the people that work so hard to make good happen in this world. Uh, thank you to those who've never even been in the building who've helped us to, uh, to share the goodness of Jesus in the world around us. So bless each one of us today. Help <coughs> us to enjoy being together and help us to worship your son Jesus in the most glorious of ways. And we just ask you to be present with us now in Jesus' name.
good ways of Jesus, Lord, and then take them out into our world. Thank you, Father, for church. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for making this church and all the churches around the world, Lord, little lighthouses in each community. Thank you, Father, for your light and your love. And today I just ask if you have someone on your heart that you would like to lift up, I invite you to do so right now. Capitano family, and I think of Sarah Lesh. I think of Jen. I think of Jessica. I think of Carol. I think of Dick Ketchum. Lord, we think of all these folks. They're all in our hearts, and I know they're on your heart too. And we thank you for that. And Lord, now we just ask you to be with us as we move forward in our time of worship for you, because boy. I'll tell you, Lord, if you weren't who you are and the church didn't exist during these times, these hard times, what would our world look like? So thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for the heart you put in your people. Thank you for the places that you give us to act out your goodness. Thank you for all these things in the strong name of Jesus Christ and all God's people said. I don't have a children's moment for this morning. Um, we're going to dismiss our children to Children's Church, but before we dismiss the children to Children's Church, um, Matthew, would you like to lead our whole church in the Lord's Prayer? Do you feel comfortable doing that? Come on up and share it with us. That's okay. Thank you. Let's all say it together, because I know... Yeah, you say it. Go ahead. Take it away. Our Father, who art in heaven... Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Yeah. Uh-huh, that's what I'm talking about. And all God's children said, amen. amen. All kids are dismissed. I understand you're working on some neat valentines for some of our nursing home folks. So happy art project. And there you go. <laughs> the kids are making um, some valentines for some of our folks that are in Fredonia Place or uh, out at Chautauqua County Home. Uh, so if you can think of a name, uh, you know, call the office on Monday. If you can think of somebody locally who could use a little something. We like to personalize the cards this time, not just send a card, but have their name on the card. And uh, the kids are going to be doing that. So if you can think of um, a name that a person that could use a little a little love that uh, just uh, call the office on Monday and give us the name so uh, we've been talking about uh, good reasons to gather why it's important to gather the things that we glean uh, when we gather and this week we're going to take a look at um, unity the unity that we feel in the positive pieces that come from being uh, together. And sometimes, like now, when we are in a world that's anything but unified, um, we're feeling the effects. You know, unity, our unity, unity that we have with one another, maybe in the church, you know, but we are surrounded by disunity. 
and even moments within the church where we experience a little bit of disunity between us because, of course, there's always topics and issues that we're not going to all 100% agree on. So even once in a while, that disunity can creep into the church. And the truth of it is, is we're tired, aren't we? We're tired. We're tired because it's been two years. Some of us feel isolated. Some of us feel discouraged. But I want to tell you that people at the time of Jesus felt the same way. Remember, the Hebrew people had been enslaved for a long time. Uh, they were kind of underground in their, in, their, uh, in their Christian faith. They had to meet in catacombs, for heaven's sakes, you know, which are like tombs. They couldn't even come out and meet like this. So I'm sure they felt some anxiety. And I'm sure that anxiety really hit them as they walked down a Roman road and saw people hanging on crosses, their friends, their family members. That would give me anxiety, you know. <laughs> and in some parts of the Middle East, it's still happening. Maybe not to that extreme, but think about what's going on in the Gaza Strip. Think about what's going on uh, with the Syrians and the refugees. Other countries are really struggling in some major ways. Think about Ukraine, the disunity that's going on, and the anxiety that those people feel every single day being in potential war zones. And in our own way, I think we are feeling some of the same I will say post-traumatic stress. We all are experiencing some of the same feelings. Are we going to go outside? Are we going to catch something? If we get together with somebody, are we going to get sick? We all are living under this little bit of anxiety. But I want to tell you something. The church and we as a people, if you think of it, have always had some sort of disunity or some sort of anxiety-provoking event going on in the world around us. I was thinking about it. I'm 60, so I wasn't alive in the 50s, but I was a kid in the 60s. And I remember as a kid, we had the Civil Rights Movement. The Vietnam War was posted all over TV. Anti-war protests, political assassinations, and I remember that we would have to um, do these drills. We were five or six years old. And they would teach us to go under our desk in case there was a bomb, and we had to cover our heads. Sometimes we even went out in the hallway. They, our teachers would lead us out into the hallway, and we would all kneel down and crouch, and they would tell us in case there was a bomb. Now, think of the anxiety that we felt as kids. One time, they even took us all the way down the basement where all the food rations were. Something must have been going on in the world around it. Us kids felt some anxiety, but I imagine the grown-ups felt a lot of anxiety. In the 70s, there were racial riots. I remember that. People would come to school with chains and knives, and there were fights on the school lawn. And then we didn't hide under our desk. No, they actually kept us home. So there was a lot of anxiety then. And I remember Watergate. I was a kid, but I remember that president on the TV going like this. And all the anxiety. I remember then the anti-war movement. And I remember wars and rumors of wars. And I remember in the 80s, the AIDS pandemic. Remember that? Everybody was afraid to go into a restaurant to touch something somebody else touched. Even that gave us anxiety. My point is, is that if you think of it, we have always had something in our world around us that has caused anxiety and disunity. But where have you always been able to come and experience a little bit of soul rest? Our churches. In the middle of all the crazy, in the middle of all the hard, you have people that were still getting clothing for people, filling flood buckets, singing together. I mean, church is a light in the middle of the darkness, isn't it? In the middle of the anxiety, all around us in the disunity. And you know, Matthew 24, scripture tells us, it says, you know what? It's going to be hard. It's going to become increasingly more difficult. But 
Jesus says, I don't want you to be afraid of that. He says, I have overcome the world. And if I am an overcomer, I will give you what you need to overcome in every situation. Because he is an overcomer, we too can overcome in any situation that we might be thrown in. Because he gives us what we need. That's one of the reasons we come to church. It's the first day of the week. It's the day of the week that can get you ready for the rest of your week. It's an opportunity to come together to sing, to praise, to thank God for all the good blessings he's brought to your life. It's your light in the middle of the darkness. And the truth is, is we know that there's darkness. And we know that there is a Satan. There is an enemy of our soul. There is evil. You cannot deny that there's not evil in this world. We see it every day. But even that we can overcome because we have a choice to choose unity in every situation that we as a people are in. And I don't mean just us sitting here. I mean you at home and anybody else who will listen to this. Whether you're in a pizza place and there's disunity or whether there's disunity in your home or whether there's discord here or there's discord there, you personally have a choice to overcome in that situation and bring and choose unity. We can overcome evil with good. We can do this. You made it through the 50s, some of you made it through the 40s, through the 60s, through the 70s, through the 80s, through the 90s. You have come this far and you are still standing. Sitting right now, but standing. <laughs> what does that tell you? What does that tell you? So we know that we can and we will overcome the hard things of the world. Like I said, Jesus is an overcomer because he is, so will we be. And we also know that our church, every church across the globe, is a light in the middle of darkness. Every single church around the world is like a little lighthouse in the middle of their community. And every time one closes, it gets a little dimmer. There's a life, there is life and there's blessing found in unity. And it is a testimony to an increasingly chaotic world. And Lord, we know we need your blessing and your strength to unite us in these difficult times. So help us, Lord, to bring unity into this world of disunity. This is our last week talking about why we gather. And uh, I would say that at this point in our journeys, all of us are craving some unity and some peace. You know, coming together, whether it's for a study, whether it's for church on Sunday, if it's two of you having coffee, whatever it is, where two or more are gathered, he is there. And friends, that gathering eliminates that isolation that we can get stuck in. And isolation, I think, is hurting us more than COVID. It is. The fear of it and the isolation of it is hurting us more than the actual issue. So I want to encourage you to, in safe ways, choose to get together. Join a small study. Join the Zoom group. Our Zoom group on Wednesday, we have that sitting at the feet of Rabbi Jesus. The one on Wednesday night will be hybrid. It'll be Zoom for the people who want to come in on Zoom. But at 6 o'clock, I'd like the people who want to meet in person to come and have coffee before. Come and be together before. 
come and have a little time of fellowship before because it's important. <clears throat> um, we know that in our church and in church in our church situation, there are certain things that really draw us and bind us together. We were singing about it this morning. Our desire to share the good news. We share in our Christ-like love for ourselves and one another and the world. In church, we learn about hope and we find hope. And the other things that bind us together are fellowship and teaching and communion and prayer. These are the amazing things that unify us when we are together, but even greater is that we share in Jesus. Not only our faith in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, but we share in his spirit, and we share in our, our commitment to be like Jesus. Not to just be like Jesus on Sunday, to be like Jesus every day. My daughter used to say to me, yeah, Ma, they're one way on Sunday and they're another way on Monday. Our goal and our commitment as, as believers is to be like Jesus as best as we can every day because that is what's going to change the world around us. It's his spirit in us. And like I said, it doesn't take an auditorium full of people to be in his spirit. Jesus says it for two or more are gathered, I am there. And as Reverend Ricker would say, I think we've met our quota. Uh-huh. He has a good saying for everything. <laughs> Psalm 133, and I want to read this. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is when brothers and sisters live together in harmony. It's like a fine oil on the head running down, an anointing oil running down. It's like the dew of Hermon falling on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has bestowed the blessing of life forevermore. And when we choose to be a people that choose harmony and unity, we also bless our Father in heaven. We are his ambassadors, aren't we? Who we are here and who we are out there, not just bring a blessing to the people, but it also brings a blessing to the kingdom of heaven because they're going to go, wow, why are you guys always so nice? Why are you so generous? How do you guys take care of each other the way you do? If I would have been in that situation, I would have been flipping out. And you just totally kept your cool. How do you do that? How do you keep your center and how do you keep your peace like that? I have Jesus in me and with me. The greater is he who is in me, right? But the truth of it is, sometimes we are going to be divided. And even the Lord gives us some answers for that. <clears throat> On those times when we're not feeling uh, unified. And believe me, in a church it can happen, right? We know it because we've been on committee together. <laughs> you know, we all have different ideas. Ronnie and I were just talking about this yesterday, Mary and Ronnie and Tom, that, um, that being a leader in a church full of leaders has its pluses, but it's also a challenge. Because leaders are strong. And I said to Ronnie, I said, actually, I love that we have strong leaders because then I can say, you take this. You lead in this area. You lead in this area. And you lead in this area. But sometimes we're going to disagree. And it says, um, it says, you know, above all things, when we're feeling those moments of disunity, whether it's in church or out of church, above all things, we need to choose to focus on the cross. Seek ye first the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and God will give you everything you need. Matthew 6, 33. And God knows what's going on in our world. He knows about all the muck going on around us. And he put us here on purpose in the middle of the muck. So it's not always going to be easy to navigate the muck, but he's given us what we need to do that. So if you're in church, if you're out of church, if you're in a situation and someone hurts you, is the hurt or the offense worth the disunity? Is you and I not agreeing on how to do a project worth a separation? Is it worth dividing a church? Is 
me having one idea about how to run a committee um, and you having another idea about running a committee, is it worth us sitting on separate sides of the fence and breaking the bond of the church for one of us to be right? No. No. Seek ye first the kingdom. And I got to tell you, this church is really good at that. Because you guys have had a lot of hard stuff happen to you. But you always come back to this. And even in the middle of the disunity that we've been experiencing with masks and no masks and COVID and this and that, and I know there were people who felt differently about the issue, but you're sitting next to each other. You're not over here and you're not over there because you've decided that this and this is more important. So you have to decide for yourself when you're in a situation like that. And if someone hurts you, you have a choice to make. You can either hang on to the hurt or you can choose to forgive. It says to go to a brother or sister, speak to them one-on-one -on -one and resolve the issue. I am not good at letting things fester. I'll tell you right now. My daughter is not good at letting things fester. We are get it out on the table, get talk it through even if it's hard, so that we can move forward forward because no disagreement is worth losing the relationship so like i said you might disagree with somebody you know that's where you have to extend that forgiveness but always keep your eye on the cross because no no uh, disagreement is worth the disunity and we know that we are one Peace, harmony, unity, division, community, they were all just as important 2,000 years ago, just like they are today. There's not one New Testament book that doesn't deal with human issues, human problems, or our relationships with God. All of Scripture is filled with people who struggled just like us and lived in anxious times just like us. Unity and harmony are worthy pursuits, and it's important to remember that at the end of the day, we are one in Christ. Listen to what Paul says. As a prisoner in the Lord, I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling you have received. I don't mean calling like a pastor now. I mean calling as a Christian. Walk in a manner worthy of the calling that you have received with humility and gentleness, patience, bearing with one another in love and with diligence to pre preserve the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. As we bring this series to a close, I just want to share a little statistic. The church as we know it is changing. Studies show over the last few years that there's a decrease in those who identify themselves as true Jesus-following Christians. Even more concerning is that church attendance is decreasing, and I know that um, there's a whole generation of people that are missing uh, in our churches. You know, that hurts me, not just because of coming to church, but this is where you learn the Ten Commandments. This is where you, you navigate through that stuff. Do you realize if every person on earth followed the Ten Commandments, our world would be a very different place? Ten simple rules for community. But we learn those here. See, when we were a kid, we actually learned them in school. We learned them there too. And we went to CCD classes. We got out early on Monday and we went to learn about Jesus. They don't do that anymore. So where are they going to learn? Where are they going to have a, a develop a moral compass? Where are they going to learn that if you're in trouble, you've got a whole church family around you to support you, help you, and love you? I feel bad for those kids because they won't have the same hope that you have right now. That's why I'm so grateful for every child that sits in these pews. And I'm so grateful that you support 
the programs and the things that we want to do with them because they do know the Ten Commandments. They do know the love of church family. They do know that you can find unity in a world of disunity at their church and now maybe even in their homes. And then there's isolation. Friends, I think over the last couple years, the isolation of not being together is really starting to get to us. So I want to encourage you to do what you're doing here. There are a lot of spaces here where you could, if you're not comfortable coming into a public place because of, of the COVID issue, I would like to tell you that there's a whole balcony up there that could seat probably another 15 people with space between, and we've got several places here where at least another 20 or 25, maybe even 30 people could sit safely in the pews. You could even sit over there where I sit, wherever you want to be, but come back to church. Come be together. Come have coffee with Tom on Sunday morning and Nick and listen to those two guys tell ridiculous stories at the coffee table. <laughs> it's fun. It's good. I'm going to close with this. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. I want you to listen to this. I'm talking to you here. You. You are the light of the world. A city on a hilltop that cannot and will not be hidden. No one lights their lamp and puts it under a basket. Nope. We put it on a stand. And it gives light to everyone, everywhere. In the same way, friends, when you leave this building, let your light shine. Let his light shine through you so that they may see your good deeds and bring glory to your Father in heaven. You, me, we, this place that cost a fortune to heat, but you do, <laughs> is light in the midst of darkness. Unity in the midst of a world of disunity. You are the light of the world. Together, you're like the Bills Stadium with everybody with their lighters lit. It's a good thing. Father, I thank you for each person sitting here. Father, I pray that you will impress upon their heart that your word is true, that because you overcame the world, Father, we can overcome it too. And you know what, Lord? I just know that you will help us to be encouraged today to know that we can get through this time. We've made it through way, way worse, Lord. Encourage people to have the brevity to gather in safe ways, to come together, to not let fear isolate them, Lord Jesus. I pray your blessing on each one of us here and at home, Lord. Brighten our lights today. Brighten our lights today. I just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe our choir has something nice. Yes.
was beautiful. Let's all stand and join our choir for our, our closing hymn. That was a beautiful choir, beautiful harmony. And you're right, they deserve a little clap here and there. change the words to we shall overcome today. Not someday, but changing all the some days to today we will live in peace. Today we will overcome. Today we will believe. Yes? And amen to that? Amen. Today we will choose to do that and live in unity. And friends, I just want to uh, remind you that um, if you'd like to support the vision and mission of the church, you can do so. There's little boxes on the back doors. Uh, it does a lot of good. Everything you give goes exactly where it's supposed to go. If you're a person at home that you would like to uh, support the vision and mission of the church, we just really appreciate that. You've done so much good over the last two years. I can never even tell you uh, the good that you've done. And if you are a person who is at home and you're watching, I'd like to encourage you to go online. We are going to have a form now that you can... Um, receive our newsletter and be a little bit more informed about what's going on and, and, and kind of join the church in a different kind of way uh, just so that we can know you and you can know us and that way if you need anything we can be here for you the way you've been here for us. So I just want to encourage you all to do that. 
So uh, thank you. I don't think there's any other reminder except Wednesday, uh, uh, sitting at the feet of Rabbi Jesus, 6 o'clock, if you'd like to come early for coffee and gather a little bit in a safe way in the Deland Room, and the rest will start on Zoom. It, uh, I'll probably go on at 6.15 so that we can all be together in a way that feels comfortable for all. So now let's enjoy our closing blessing together. this week and may he bless you richly and may you continue to be the light in the world around you. I'd like to invite you to either sit and listen to the postlude or you may use this time to exit the church. Thank you everybody for being with us today. Happy Sunday to all of you. Happy Sunday. <laughs>